Hello everybody, my name is Sanguine, and I'm happy to finally be able to put out my movement guide. Now, this is something I've kind of had workshopped for a little bit now, but now I'm finally happy to present it to you guys. Now, my main reason for doing this is to potentially add something into the finals movement community and hopefully see new techniques and new ideas introduced into the finals community. At least, that's what I'm really hoping. Now, as far as this video is going to go, I'm hoping to keep it short and keep it a smaller guide, but we're going to see what happens. Ideally, it's going to be short, though. Maybe. Hey, this is Sanguine from the future. I just wanted you to know, uh, I lied. This is not going to be a small guide. In fact, it might be a little bit longer, but it's going to be a little bit more comprehensive. Hopefully. Now, without further ado, let's get into the guide. Now, before we get into the movement, I want to talk about something else briefly. Now, when you're running around the map, this isn't directly movement related, but it's going to translate to movement, right? When you're running around the map, you should never be running in the middle of open sections or open corridors like this. This in itself is a bad position. So in order to do most movement, you're going to need to be by cover, right? You need to be by walls, something climbable, or anything really it's important to keep by cover to keep changing directions to keep changing angles so you can surprise your enemy in a multitude of different ways that in itself while isn't super movement related is just tactics and position related but this kind of mentality to keep in the back of your head is ultimately going to allow you to perform more movement rather than having movement feel like it's more used in niche situations. Because in my gameplay, I'm consistently using movement any chance I can. And it's because I'm always around cover, I'm always looking around, I'm always by a building or some kind of structure. Hell, I'm even by doors. <laughs> Being by literally any amount of cover that you can use even this pot right here is going to help you exceptionally. Here is some gameplay footage of me utilizing cover to maximize the effectiveness of my map surroundings and outsmarting my enemies. Now really quickly, I just want to showcase something very specific before we get into the movement basics. Now, what I want to talk about really quick is something to do with buttons. Um, ignore my setup. This is not going to make any sense to you. You're going to be looking at it like, what the? No, try to get past that. The thing that I truly want to talk about here is that jump being on scroll wheel down. You can have it up or down, but I highly recommend setting jump to scroll wheel specifically for instances where you're trying to climb. This is going to be more apparent later. Also, the thing I want to talk about is not having sprint be on hold. For most movement techniques, you're always going to want sprint to be on toggle. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go with the basics. I mean, there's no other way around it. We got to go with the basics. So first things first, we're going to go with rocking sprint. So this is very self-explanatory. The sprint key is whatever you set it to be. But it's important to know that you should always be rocking sprint before any kind of movement technique that you're attempting. It is always just better to have sprint rocked so you're making the most out of movement in this game. Sprinting everywhere is essential. It's important to note that crossing sprint, specifically after taking a shot, is essential to keep momentum going. Secondly, we're going to go with sliding. As you do know, sliding is a basic mechanic in the game. You press sprint, and then you can slide. And there's a little bit of friction to it, 
So there's not too, too much you can do with sliding alone, but it is a good mechanic to keep up with and to perform very often when you can, specifically to evade bullets or to get a little bit of momentum or whatever. One important note about sliding is that when you initiate the slide sequence, it's only going to go in the direction that you're looking as opposed to the direction that you're pressing. It's also very important to note that sliding down a slope will actually net you a speed boost rather than a penalty from the friction. Now, this is important because utilizing this in key situations can easily help you in a multitude of situations. And I know what you're thinking. Well, how is sliding worth really talking about? It's quite literally just hitting crouch right after you sprint. Well, I have a few key examples on how sliding can actually be really useful and how abusing slide tech can help you win fights. Now, other than these details, I don't really want to get further into discussion about sliding because a multitude of YouTubers have already touched the subject since this game's inception. <laughs> so that being said, YouTubers like Otter have made an extensive and great guide on movement, but specifically his section on sliding is actually just immaculate. I recommend checking that out from two minutes and 25 seconds to five minutes and 24 seconds. If you're looking for more information on sliding. So now we've got that out the way. We can get into some more advanced tech. So for one, zip lines. Zip lines in themselves are kind of basic. There's a lot of tech in the game that they have removed, sadly. But there is still a big one that you need to know. And that one is the momentum you get off of jumping off of a zip line. See, when you jump off of a zip line, you get a good momentum boost. Future Sanguine here. I just wanted to note that it's very important that you get vertical momentum when getting off of or jumping off of a vertical zip line and you get horizontal momentum when you're jumping off a horizontal zip line. I didn't even hold a directional key there. And all I did was abuse the momentum from the zip line. By doing so, you can chain bunny hops, which are just consecutive jumps and get a lot of momentum and a lot of movement off of doing almost little to no work and just timing your jumps. Here are a few examples of me jumping off of zip lines to get more momentum. Now, I'm gonna go back a little bit, right? Bunny hopping is a key component to almost every FPS game that has movement. I mean, hell, even Valorant and CS it's it's a it's a tactic now it's not is it a big one not really but it still exists in those games and this game is no different the bunny hop pretty much is jump in sequence but as you can notice if you just if you don't have any momentum to start off with and you just try to bunny hop you're gonna slowly but surely lose your momentum even if you time them right you're just going to lose momentum because you haven't gotten momentum from sprint or from sliding or from jumping off of a zip line or from a jump pad. Future Sanguine here. It's important to note that sprinting alone and getting momentum solely off sprinting is not going to help your momentum for bunny hopping. Sprinting before any action is important to keep and sustain momentum and also allow you to perform most movement. So it's important to know that you can bunny hop strictly after hopping off of a zip line or a jump pad or 
whether you're doing some kind of slide tech as well. You could chain bunny hops really well and they're very fluid, assuming you have momentum and the speed to do so. So that being said, we can get into the more advanced part of our tutorial. So as we all know, jump pads exist in this game. There are a few that are already on the map and on top of being on the map, you as a medium player, specifically as a medium player, have access to a jump pad. Now, not only is this great for your team and maneuvering your team to different locations, but it also allows light players to get crazy momentum from their dash or grapple or anything else. And it allows heavies to get momentum as well. A class that doesn't have any mobility besides charge. And let's be honest, charge is kind of niche. That being said, it's important to know that with jump pads, what you want to do is not just run into them. It's better to slide into them. So run, glide, and you go a little bit farther. And you can chain bunny hops off of that momentum as previously explained. Here's a few clips of me using jump pads regularly in my gameplay. Oh! Slightly more advanced. The jump pad bunny hop is basically, well, it's something I use a lot. Let's just put it that way. I use it at almost every chance I get, sometimes a little bit too much uh, when I could have saved jump pad for a different situation. However, it's just something really good to have practice down, to practice it in a multitude of situations and to be able to perform this technique to not only traverse the map, but to take aggressive positions, whether you have an F car, AK, grenade launcher, whatever weapon you have, you're gonna get crazy momentum and potential off of this. So let's get into it. To do this, all you're going to do is perform a basic slide jump into the jump pad, and you're gonna look down, and you're going to put down the jump pad right as you're about to touch the ground. That's all. It's that simple. You don't have to have your jump out, your jump pad out first, but you just need to slide jump into it. You can take a shot and then right in here about to touch the ground, you put it down at your feet and you get good momentum. And when you combine this with certain aspects like air strafing, where when you're in the air, you hold the directional key, such as A or D, you can go in different directions with it too. Not completely, different but i mean i got a good what 45 to 60 degrees of an angle there just holding um effectively a and w together while i was moving on that second jump pad combine that with the first one and you can get even further however in the practice range it's a little bit awkward to do um because it's a small area so practice that because that's going to help you tremendously the next thing with jump pads involves a zip line. You can also do this off of a zip line, not exclusive to another jump. Pad. You can jump pad hop, get the momentum there and full send it. Now, just a quick note, you do not have to turn your camera like I do in some of my clips. That is something I personally do because I feel like for me at least, it's easier to swerve around than it is to look straight up and down. But you should do whatever you're comfortable with for this movement technique at the end of the day. Here are a few clips of me using the jump pad bunny hop to secure kills, damage, or even just to traverse the map. and try to kill one of y'all. I am a freak of nature. I...
Let's get into the horizontal one. There are, this is a niche situation and I haven't been able to get any clips of it yet. I've used it before to escape situations or just randomly by accident, but I have never used it to actively get an elimination. So I'm not going to include too much of a demonstration other than what's in the practice switch. As you can see, with the footage shown in the practice range, it is entirely possible to get horizontal momentum from jumping off of a zip line, placing it on a wall or some kind of surface. It could be, a, it could even be a crate or one of these boxes, it could be anything. It is completely possible to get horizontal momentum and shoot back the way you came. But I can positively say that this has a good chance of saving your life in a situation that you might need it. If you get any kills, please send it over to me because I would love to see it. <laughs> I mean, I, I am a nut for clips. I am a nut for nutty clips, bro. So another technique that I want to show, but that isn't really regarded as a movement technique, is mostly using doors as cover. Now, as we know, we can use doors as a little portable shield. I mean, not only do doors allow us to keep moving, but they also allow us to use themselves as cover. And cover, we can open and close. And we, when we have control of this kind of cover, we can effectively do whatever we want. We can take pop shots, we can play safe, we can close the door and run away to cover our ass. There's a lot of plays we can make with just the doorway. So, the important thing to note is, with a door that we can actively use as cover to open and close, we can effectively ensure that we're always at the cover advantage. While this is more of a, definitely more of a tactic thing, playing around doors and centering yourself around doors will allow you to take different angles, to perform different movement, and in fact, to prove my point, I will show a few clips from my own gameplay of how I use doors. One last thing, and this is gonna sound a little obvious. However, it's important to note that doors close and open on the side that you are on. So doors are always going to open outward on the side you are on. They're never going to open inward. That being said, we have another basic tech that I want to go over. I call this the door spin. The door spin is effectively opening and closing the door in kind of a smooth motion. The door spin technique is really just running in, interacting with the door, opening it, and then closing it behind you by spinning around in a full 360. Like this. Now, this technique is important to know, right? Because when you're escaping certain situations, it's important not <laughs> to get shot in the ass while you're running. This technique will allow you to effectively cover your ass when you're running through a doorway. It's a little bit self-explanatory that you could do this to begin with, but I felt, hey, I'm making a movement guide. I might as well go over every little thing that I typically do to enhance my own gameplay. So another movement tech that I just want to go over really quick is really just climbing. Now, climbing can be used in a multitude of different ways, whether it's on random broken objects to even windows like this. Now, how this is being done 
is effectively I'm going up to the windowsill or the window frame or whatever we want to call that small bit. You either you can either go up to it by clicking any directional key you want, assuming it's not W, unless under the circumstance you plan on flicking behind you. And effectively you look up and you jump at the window. Now you can do this from the side, like I've shown here, or you can do it any other way you want. If need be, it is completely possible the chain window climbs to reach the highest destination possible. Now, besides window climbing, there's something I like to call snake window climbing. Now, snake window climbing is essentially just window climbing as usual, typical window climbing. However, I personally use scroll wheel to keep scrolling to keep spamming the jump input. Doing this allows me to climb multiple objects almost simultaneously, thus achieving a better climb, like this right here in the practice range. Doing this by spamming scroll wheel and panning your camera, you can effectively turn what should be two separate climbs into almost like one and a half or one simultaneous climb. This tool can easily be useful, especially when climbing objects where you're trying to get up the object rather quickly and trying to essentially enable yourself to do what is otherwise not really thought possible. Now, I'll be sure to play a few examples of snake climbing and how climbing in general can just be useful as a movement tech to surprise your enemies and take different positions. Now, I don't really want to go over any further information about climbing, as I feel like in multiple other movement guides, this has been touched upon. However, I would like to shout out a specific YouTuber named PiggyXD. PiggyXD has a wonderful series that he normally kind of does, where he shows and showcases a lot of climbing spots and how you can really apply climbing more to your gameplay rather than just sitting down in a normal spot and kind of bunkering up. Instead, you can climb over a multitude of specific areas that'll allow you to take different positions on your enemy and allow you to have high ground at almost all times without having a specific ability up to do so. Now that we got that out the way, we can talk about something that I really enjoy. So there's a couple things that you can do on a standing still target as just a medium. Ideally, when you're running around with a shotgun or a grenade launcher, the last thing you want to be doing is running around like this, shooting shots. Yes, it does really good damage, but not you're not going to be that close all the time. And even the sprinting around you're kind of an easy target and you can't really shoot. I mean, you're, you're very static, easy, predictable target. To remedy this, we could use slides, slide jumps, and combining them and chaining them to effectively bamboozle our enemy, causing a much harder to hit target and to effectively give ourselves an edge over the enemy using movement. So, for instance, let's say we have this guy right here. We want to kind of go around him, right? So, 
brings me to the next solution. I don't know what to call this movement tech, but I'm just going to kind of call it slide hopping. It's really very simple motion. Effectively, it's just procking the spring key. So just pressing the spring key, pressing W, and immediately crouching, and then flicking to target. And then you're going to do that again. The kind of proc sprint, shoot. It's continuously slide, jump, turn, slide, jump, turn, and flick in the middle of that. But if you can't perform the flick shot, it's not a big deal. Even if you miss, it's not a big deal. Chaining these and getting the timing right is the most important thing. It's important to note that in some instances, when you're performing this movement technique, that you can get away with doing it in tight spaces around the person without procking jump all too much. However, it's not going to change your hitbox all that much and is much more useful in close quarters situations pretty much exclusively. When you combine that technique in a tight space, it gets very hectic. And especially when you're going around a target, it gets very hectic for them to track it. Pulling the examples that we showed earlier about sliding, you can see that now we were using or utilizing slide hopping as our methodology for evading our target. That all being said, that is the end of my tutorial right now. I appreciate all of you so, so much. Thank you for stopping on by. Peace.